Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and I'm going to start this video off by saying if you have a weak stomach and a weak constitution, just stop the video. Go do something else. Go play a video game. Go for a walk. Go do anything else. Because if you're looking at the title of the video, the most innocent of you will probably assume we're talking about 3D rendering software. We are not. We are actually talking about blenders. Real blenders that you would find in your kitchen and how they've unfortunately been used on animals, ladies and gentlemen. Now, this video has sort of bugged me for the entire day, and uh, it's been a couple hours. So to start off, I was on social media just scrolling through, and I came across a video, and you might have heard of this on the internet, you might have seen a YouTube video, you might have seen this all over TikTok, the Cat Blender video. And that's pretty much where I'm going to leave it at, ladies and gentlemen. It is about as gruesome as your imagination is going to make it. Now, I don't believe in the paranormal, I don't believe in ghosts, I don't believe in, you know, scary entities that you would find in, in creepypastas. I do believe in evil, though, and I think evil exists in the heart of human beings. Humans will do the most evil things possible, stuff that will absolutely blow your mind. And this is one of those videos that I will never forget for the rest of my life. And I've seen a lot of shock videos in my life. I've seen a lot of scary stuff. I've seen a lot of gruesome stuff, uh, whether it be on Reddit, whether it be on the dark web, whether it be right here on YouTube. I have been through shock websites on the internet, you know, Ogrish. Um, I've been all over run the gauntlet. I have run the entire thing. And in some ways, it's disgusting as it is, I think I've almost become a bit desensitized to stuff over the years. This is the one video where like, my God, the noises from everything are still running in my head. So ladies and gentlemen, I decided to do my own investigation and part of this video is almost like a bit of therapy in a way too, for me to just completely get closure and move on from this weird chapter. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for those of you who are still stuck around here watching this entire video, this is a cat blender investigation. So to understand, last time I looked into somebody that was an animal abuser, two years ago, this that person, who was known as the TikTok cat killer at the time, and because of tips sent to the FBI, they literally actually, you know, FBI Salt Lake City field office said, that case is an outstanding example of society's intolerance to animal cruelty and the public's willingness to do the right thing. Tips poured in from around the world, assisting in an intense and technically complex investigation to find the alleged perpetrator and put a stop to the senseless and horrific abuse of innocent animals. And the FBI, alongside local law enforcement, did take down, allegedly, uh, this cat killer. And they found a lot of live cats, and they found, unfortunately, uh, cats that couldn't make it. So this is one of those scenarios where this is a, an event that appears to have happened in China. Now, the video exists out there in the world, and I don't recommend you go seek it out at all. In fact, if anything, for the next couple weeks, I definitely recommend if your social media service of choice has a mute word function, just throw in the words cat and throw in the words blender, okay? Yes, you'll have to give up cute cat videos, but at least you won't have to watch one of the most <coughs> disgusting videos in quite a long time. Now to start off with, I don't know if I can exactly show you this, but to understand these are Chinese letters that appeared on a blender in said video. Now, of course, because of this, people assume that obviously this must have happened somewhere in Asia because the complete writing on this is in Chinese. And this is where the investigation kicked off and people have started to look into who this person was. Literally within days of this video being posted, you had individuals starting to post actual addresses to the person. Now I'm blurring this for you because uh, I'm not here to absolutely leak an address to anybody. And again, to understand one of the important parts about this is when you're investigating situations like this, vigilantism is never the answer, despite how emotionally inflammatory this stuff can be. Usually you want to work with law enforcement, you want to work with people so that they can create a chain of evidence and that they can actually go out and deal with arrests. Also, if you're going to look into information like this, you need to be 1000% on the money to make sure whoever you're accusing of such a heinous crime is actually guilty of said crime. 
because a lot of people do definitely throw out things willy-nilly. So because of this, people were looking at IP addresses, they were trying to scrape as much data as they can, and I wanna go over a lot of this information and how none of it is actually verified and none of it seems to actually be real. Whoever this is appears to still actually be at large, and uh, unfortunately they operate in a country where animal abuse laws really don't actually exist. So let's get to it. Now, of course, this one address existed all the way out in China, and of course, to give you a quick example of it, the actual address existed in Heiwan, which is northeast of Gangzhou and Shenzhen, okay? The basically two big economic centers of China. So of course, if you zoom in over here, ladies and gentlemen, in the old Google Earth here, you'll see that this whole town was where this alleged person was apparently living in. Now, immediately all over TikTok, people started throwing around, he got arrested, and let's go. And of course, nowhere was any evidence actually posted. In fact, a lot of ideas were brought up to a food blogger, ladies and gentlemen, who uh, apparently was shown up in a few police reports that showed up all around Sina Weibo, which was Chinese uh, social media. Now, one of the actual things people brought up was this Fuyang Funan Public Security Online, which apparently was verified. This is from a Sina Weibo page, again, Chinese social media. And while I can't read Chinese, thankfully somebody has actually translated this entire situation. So for instance, one of the characters is used in Chinese police reports to cover part of a person's name to keep privacy. So for instance, this person on April 26, 2023, the Xiangbei police station of our bureau received a call from a group of people saying that the cat had been stolen and the cat thief, Zhu, had been found. But they had asked the police for help. After receiving the report, the Xiangbei police station dispatched the police in time and launched an investigation. It's now found that on March 15, Zhu, a 29-year-old male, abused cats in a small forest in Lushing Town, our county, and made a short video in share in the QQ group. After spreading through the internet, it was condemned by netizens and animal protection activists, causing bad social impact according to the relevant provisions of the Public Security Management Punishment Law. So again, looking further into it, somebody had looked in is just as served. Apparently, Zoo was subject to administrative detention, which typically has a maximum duration of 15 days in China, two weeks. The measure is commonly used by law enforcement in some countries to detain individuals for administrative and regulatory reasons, without the need for a formal criminal charge or trial. As a result, Zhu's detention will not result in a criminal record. So in this case, uh, it seems like China doesn't really recognize this as a crime, uh, again, if all of this is to be believed. So this isn't necessarily even the person. I've seen people say that because of this, the person has apparently, you know, been in prison for two months, they're sentenced to two months. All of this is unsubstantiated claims. Also, one thing to understand with Fu Yang Funan Public Security Office, if you actually look at where Fu Yang Funan is, uh, it actually is entirely separate from the location we were looking in or the location that the internet was effectively doxing uh, without ever really looking into these situations uh, with the proper eye, so to speak. Looking into Fuyang Funan, which is Funan County in Fuyang, this is way, way farther from the initial location. If you actually look at this place right here, this red zone is Funan County. Zooming in close here, ladies and gentlemen, you'll find out the city inside here is Lushingzhan, and of course, if we try to find the town that they were talking about, so to speak, Lushing Town or Lushing Zhan, this is the actual town. There was a forest outside this location where the police report had actually been referring to. So not the other location that people were suddenly doxing out of nowhere. If anything, that also appeared to be a location that had no correlation to really anything. I don't know where TikTokers were coming up with this evidence or where they were coming up with these locations and what exactly the IP they were using. Even though IPs can't exactly give exact locations, they can only give generalized areas or really the data center that somebody is connected through. Now, based on another post from Hunan Star Video in, uh, again, on Weibo, uh, it actually ended up saying detention after the well-known blogger stole the cat, he brutally tortured and killed the cat in the woods, and even made a video, MCN behind it. Recently, Fu Yang on Hui, the well-known food blogger has attracted attention. The Funan police notified the well-known food blogger, Jack, abused cats in the grove and made a short video to share in the QQ group. Uh, that's basically Chinese, like WhatsApp. The public security organ detained Zhu in accordance with the law. It is reported that the brokerage company of Jack is Shanghai Xinji, 
Shongi Culture Media Co. Limited. And Kichasha APP shows that the company was established in May 2017. Anyways, none of that is necessarily the most important. What was important was they were actually abusing cats. Now, was it the same cat in question? Uh, it doesn't appear necessarily to be so. Anybody saying this is an arrest or if this is even the same person is going in completely unsubstantiated with no actual evidence in the situation. Now, unfortunately, one of the problems with China that I was looking into was uh, they appear to have literally no animal welfare law. So for instance, animal welfare in the People's Republic of China is again a topic of growing interest, but of course there is currently no nationwide laws in China that exhibitly, explicitly prohibit the mistreatment of animals, except for a more generic law protecting wildlife, which a lot of countries have. China has a lot of wildlife they want to protect. Uh, I believe pandas, they have a, a, a express dominion over the world on. So for some wildlife, China is definitely down to protect. But compared to laws like here, uh, animal welfare really isn't taken as seriously in China, unfortunately. That doesn't mean that Chinese people just like to abuse and torture animals. That's actually far from the truth. Uh, people anywhere in the world definitely do have humanity. But in China, the only real laws that typically went against uh, any form of animal abuse or any form of animal welfare typically happened mostly after the COVID-19 pandemic. So of course, in April 2020, the city of Shenzhen went further in its crackdown against wet markets by completely and indefinitely banning both the sale and consumption of cat and dog meat. Which, yes, people in China do consume cats and dogs. Uh, every country's got its sort of, uh, you know, quirks, if you will, too. This is not uh, abnormal for Chinese people. It's abnormal for us, but it's not abnormal for the Chinese. And it really has never been. And, of course, this belief comes from the great famine they once had. Anyways, I don't know why I'm giving you a history lesson. I'm just trying to, like, you know, relay everything as much as I can. It really showed me that there are really, really disgusting practices that are still happening today such as bile farming, for instance. So in China, uh, there are about 10,000 Asiatic black bears for bile production, a $1.6 billion per year industry. The bears are permanently kept in cages and bile is extracted from cuts in their stomach. And these bears stay in cages their entire life, from birth to death, they are going to stay there and basically being tortured for the rest of their actual life. Truly inhumane, sick shit. Now, of course, there's plenty of people that are against this, but unfortunately, it's a practice that still happens. And why? Well, it's because these bears produce a digestive liquid uh, produced in the liver, stored in the gallbladder, which is used by some traditional Asian medicine practitioners. Yes, for uh, traditional medicines, you know, alternative medicines, so to speak. Don't get my dad talking about it. He'd be fucking freaking out. Uh, yeah, uh, it, it, it's become a situation where uh, it, it's... Such a disgusting, abhorrent practice happens for quite literally uh, you know, untested medicine, so to speak. This isn't this isn't like professional pharmacology. This is like joke pharmacology. Oh, did I offend somebody by saying that? Well, I wish I could care. Now, of course, people in China found this so disgusting that very, very few times the animal rights activists get any W. Uh, it was over this. A company literally started to, they, they actually quit their in, initial public offering over the public outcry. The company was Fujian Guizhantang Pharmaceutical, which basically used this for traditional medicines. And again, traditional medicines in China, I believe account for like 75 to 80% of people's like, you know, daily uh, healthcare needs. So of course it caused such an outrage on social media and online petitions where basically they had to say, yeah, this is a very cruel and painful activity to these bears, so please stop. And uh, it seems like this was actually stopped. Uh, but of course, the practice still unfortunately runs all through China. Now again, the reason I'm bringing this up over here is looking into this situation, as disgusting as this video was, because of where it took place on Chinese homeland, there really won't be any punishment, it seems, for this alleged perpetrator. Uh, again, there are no animal welfare laws necessarily in China. And of course, while Chinese people definitely have an issue against this, that might be the only silver bullet if public outcry in China is so bad that the police force definitely has to act upon this to appease people around them. And one thing that I've learned about this, as disgusting and sad as this video is to make, the silver lining is no matter where you live, it seems as though, for the most part, human beings have a lot of compassion for these small little cute animals. No matter where you live, people do find this as a disgusting, abhorrent situation. 
Now, again, this investigation is ongoing. No leads that TikTokers, YouTubers, any horror channels have brought up actually are substantiated. Nobody has been arrested. Nobody has been found. Nobody has been identified uh, officially as of now. But I'm sure that the Chinese authorities are working on it because uh, this is not just a public outcry for us here. It's a public outcry from back home in China too. And if anything, public outcries definitely lead to some enforcement. And that's all we can really hope for. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, truly one of the sickest, most disgusting videos that I've ever seen. And it's actually stuff like this that ashames me to be a human being. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, I'm out.